Welcome again, everybody, to church. Uh, good to have you with us today. Sorry about the load shedding. Um, the coffee machine uh, will come on as soon as uh, it, it flicks across. We aren't able to run the coffee machine on a generator. So I know that's why worship, I don't know, some of you seemed a little quieter today. Is that because you didn't get your coffee or what? Hey, maybe, maybe, but it will be back on soon. And if you are just joining us today or you new to church, we've just finished a series called Closer, which has been a whole series on worship and teaching us what it really means to worship. And the hope behind that, as Cole was sharing about this series for this time of year, the hope behind Closer was that in a season um, where often people, I don't know, move away from God in, in many ways, you know, just busy with so many things, holidays, family, and also maybe getting up to mischief and nonsense. Maybe they shouldn't be if you're young, I don't know. Uh, but the idea was, let's get you close to Jesus because we need to be close to him uh, in the season. I mean, it is ideally the, the reason why we actually celebrate this time of year. So that was a series we've just done. If you missed uh, any of that, you're welcome to catch it on YouTube or um, uh, we've got a YouTube channel. You can go check those out. But today, as Cole mentioned, we are starting off a new series, Joy to the World. And um, this time of year has mixed emotions, as been mentioned. Um, carols, but did, did you enjoy that carol there? That was, that was a bit of a different take on Joy to the World. I loved it. It was amazing. Well done to the team that put that together. And then tonight as well, an opportunity just to come and just bring your families and we're just going to have some fun and the lights are going to be up. We've got someone going to be singing carols later and it's going to be a fun evening. Are you all good? Are you ready for this series? We're going to try and keep this um, series quite short in this way. We come off the back of quite, I would, I would say, not, I want to use it in a negative way, like an intense, but there's been a lot that we've talked into in the last season. We've done the Beatitudes, which was, wow, that like drilled me. Then there was the uh, Holy Bible series, and then we've obviously just done a whole series on worship. So we're going to try and keep this fun, light, a little shorter, and because um, I know you've all got lots of things to do, especially this time of year. Um, but what often happens at this time of year is it's the end of the year and many of us are feeling really drained, we're feeling really tired, we are wishing the year would just finish and have you heard the saying like, I I've lost my joy <laughs> and I think the end of the year often brings that so when it's meant to be a joyous time of year we often just feel so tired because we've lost our joy. Maybe it's just because 2022 has been hectic, it's been crazy, maybe um, I don't know, there's a whole lot of issues that have just compounded into kind of into the end of the year. Maybe there are some family issues, uh, particularly this time of the year, there can be family issues. Not everything's all amazing, like that Instagram photo that we, we post, you know, we're all sitting around, you know, and it all looks happy. But meanwhile, there's been arguments, there's been disagreements. Maybe, I don't know, your kids are already driving you crazy and they've only been on holiday like two days. Anyone, any parents? Um, you're like, what am I going to do with these kids? I, I don't know. But I just really, really want to encourage you uh, that this season, let's just trust that joy is on the way for us. That if you have lost your joy and it's been this slow uh, kind of depletion in a sense to, to the build up to the end of this year, I'm really praying that this series would just bring joy back into your heart. Is that okay? Anyone else out there need a little bit of joy in their life? Okay. So we're going to look in a moment how God actually brings joy to us. And we've got a couple of creative ideas with this series. We're going to also look at the acronym of joy and J being for Jesus, O for others, how we may bring joy to others, but also uh, the, the, the Y is you, how God wants to bring joy to you. So we'll uh, kind of unpack it a little bit. And obviously on Christmas, we'll just mention the greatest gift of all, and that is Jesus, um, and, and kind of like wrap it up there on the Christmas services. But I just want to quickly read Nehemiah 8, verse 10. Uh, Interesting story. I don't have time to give the whole context of the story, but I just want you to focus on the, the, the last line in this verse. And Nehemiah continued. He says, go and celebrate with a feast of rich foods and sweet drinks. <laughs> That's what's going to happen this time of the year, right? And, and share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. This is a sacred day before our Lord. Don't be dejected and sad for the joy of the Lord is your strength. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now, our souls, uh, we, we like to enjoy happiness in our souls, but our souls aren't fueled by happiness. I was reminded of a story just in preparing for this. Um, I think it was back in 2013. We had a Hyundai H1, okay, a bus. Um, and uh, we, were, we were going up to the Berg, to the central Berg, just literally for the day to see uh, Jin's family. 
and we drove all the way up there and what I, I looked at the, the, the fuel gauge and I thought I'd rather fill up now like uh, just in case I had to fill up on the way back like late tonight because we were only leaving the burg at about 9 p.m. driving all the way back. So I don't know if, you, if you've driven on that Lost Corp Road, you know, Central Berg, and there's just like nothing for a long time, but there was, there's this little BP on the, on the left. It was like a, like a half BP. So I pull in there, pull up to the uh, petrol bowser or the whatever you call it, the pump, and I asked the guy to fill up, not thinking anything at all. Just cool, thank you, paid, and then drove. Drove all the way to the Berg. I think uh, Jin's family was staying at Champagne Valley. Spent an awesome day there. Had lunch, had dinner, and then we got in the car and we started coming back. All the way back to about Escort. And next thing, just before the Escort off ramp on the highway, car full of kids. I think Jonah must have been like one or two at the time. The car just goes like this. You know, one of those, and you're like, you're like, please. You just can't think of anything worse then 10 o'clock at night and outside Escort. I know we've got some friends from Escort here today. Only I always joke with them when we pass Escort. I just blink and then you miss it. Um, but, and our car just breaks down on the side of the road. And uh, like, we just didn't know what to do. It's like late at night, trucks are flying past us and I'm off on the side of the road. And uh, I, like, I try to carry on a bit and it just eventually just cut off. So we phoned some friends of ours that are here today, the halls. I don't know where you guys are. Where are the halls? Are they? There, at the back. Do you remember that? We phoned you guys. They live in Escort, uh, Dan's parents. And we were like, we need help. And they came and then they picked us up. We all squashed in the car. And I, I think, I don't even know if we got the car towed. I can't even remember or we spluttered all the way. I, I, I can't even remember what happened. And then they very kindly lent us their car, which was like a sedan type car with all six of us. And we got home and we left the car um, in escort. The car was towed to Maritzburg that following week and they were trying to figure out what was wrong with the car and they couldn't figure it out. And they were doing all these tests and I'm like so stressed. I'm like, oh my gosh, what's, what's wrong with the car? And I promise you now, it was like this epiphany. Like just, I just sat up in the middle of the night, the one night, and I was like, I know what happened. The guy has put petrol in my diesel engine. So what happens with fuel? I, I, and, and they had to drain the engine, and they figured out that it was. They had put petrol in the diesel engine. But diesel apparently is heavier than petrol, so it sucked all the diesel. That's why I was able to go for so long. I was able to drive about 100 kilometers, and eventually when it got to the petrol, the car could not operate on petrol. Even though the petrol, the cap clearly says diesel. Like, I mean, I try to get hold of the, I'm like, how can the guy put diesel, I mean, petrol in a diesel engine? I mean, look, it says it like three times. I actually got a hold of BP South Africa. I was thinking like, I just can't understand how this game. I actually never resolved it. I went looked through, looking through my email trail last night and somewhere in 2014, it just stopped. I think I just gave up because I was like, that shouldn't happen. And I don't know how, but that's what happened. But all that to say is that car cannot function on petrol. It can only function on diesel. Just like you and I, we cannot function on happiness. We can only function on joy. Let that sink in. We can only function on joy. It, joy is, is our fuel. We cannot be fueled by happiness. Just to remind us as well, I know we looked at it at the Beatitudes series as well. Happiness, uh, this is quite a nice definition that I found. It's not a literal uh, dictionary definition, but it's happiness is the feeling that is controlled by happenings. So something happens, that's where happy comes from. Something happens and you feel happy, right? Okay. If, if something goes your way, you feel happy. If the interest rate comes down, you feel happy. <laughs> it's just gone up, right? So you're feeling sad right now. If we win in sports, we feel happy. I, I have to laugh because we did this little draw for the, you know, the final 16 of the soccer. And last night, uh, Dan uh, sent a little video on the group drawing names, but he did it. Uh, he, he forgot to do it prior to the game between um, Netherlands and uh, the USA. So <laughs> whoever got USA, like basically is like out of it, lost their money, whatever it is. So Sean Wallington, Mr. Wallington got the USA. We were all laughing so much at him last night. And I guarantee you he's not feeling happy, okay? He is out of the tournament. If a relationship goes well, we feel happy. If we have a good hair day, 
Ladies, we feel happy. Even guys, we have a good hair day. We feel happy. Um, and I, I've got a couple of pics of, of some bad hair days. Can I just be open and vulnerable and honest as a pastor today? Can I show you some of my, my bad hair days? Jin always says that I burn hair. I'm going to burn myself today. This, uh, I don't know what I was thinking here, but I, I, I try to um, bleach my hair, and it was meant to just be the tips, but it got to the roots, and what a disaster. That wasn't recent. That was a long time ago. And then for my sister's wedding, guys, this is a 100% true story. I, um, I said to Jin, because I had like in those days the frosted tips, you know. So I said, can you just do the ends? And I said, I, it cannot, the, the bleach cannot touch my scalp, just the ends. And while she was doing it the night before, I don't know why I also did it the night before. Um, well, it had worked prior, but I can feel my scalp's getting wet. And I'm saying, Jin, I, it shouldn't be touching my scalp because that means the roots are going are gonna to go orange. She goes, don't worry about it. Like sun kind of like just... But you'll be okay. And that's how I had to sing at my, my sister's wedding. It was embarrassing. And then the best story of all, my brother, he moves over to London. Don't show the pictures yet. He goes to London. And th th he's starting his first day at work. I think it was at Morgan Stanley. Like he's like going in as a banker, right? Or whatever it was. And uh, it was a banker's holiday that day. And uh, the day before, he had bought bleach. And he thought, well, he'll just like highlight his hair a little bit on his own. And uh, it was such a disaster. And because it was a banker's holiday in England, everything closes. He couldn't even go get dye and like fix his hair. So he went to his first day of work like this. <laughs> he was nicknamed Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> and the next day he went back with dark hair, but what a disaster. So we, we have a bad hair day, we feel uh, sad. We have a good hair day, we feel happy. And Perhaps I could say it this way. Happiness, I feel, is, is, is from the outside in. So something on the outside happens nicely for us, and then it makes us feel good inside. All I can say is joy is, is kind of the opposite way around. It's, it's internal. It's from the inside. We feel this contentment, and then it comes through on the outside. Joy is, is basically a gift from Jesus. It's something that He gives us. It's a gift from Him. It's if you look at the, the, the definition of joy, it's a delighting. It's an it's a inner peace, a contentment, an all-knowing that regardless of what happens, I can feel at peace and I can feel joy inside. I can feel a blessedness. Remember we looked at that at the Beatitude series. It's, it's different to happiness. It's a gift that God gives us. Things can fall apart on the outside, but our life can still run because it's been fueled by joy. Now, don't get me wrong. I really like happy. It's nice to be happy. It's nice when things go away. It's nice when, when we win something. It's nice when we get given something. And just by the way, I have no way of knowing who it was, but I've never had this before. I just got a deposit in my account, uh, and it just says to say thanks. I don't know who you are, but thank you so much. I, I like, I've never had that before. It's just such a blessing. I don't know. just said just to say thanks. I mean, I was happy, <laughs> very happy. Um, but life cannot be based on happiness because if it's based just on happiness guess what it's also going to be based on sadness because we will feel happy and then we will feel sad we will feel happy and then we will feel sad and it's kind of like a roller coaster and let me tell you when you go on those roller coasters that go up and down a lot very fast you you, you don't feel so good have you ever gone on Hagarth Road or Abbey Road too fast you're like woo, that, you know some of you guys I remember um, when we were in uh, Disney World the kids told me to go on this ride, which was basically you get in this rocket and you land on the moon, okay? And I'm like, I've got this, because I can actually do roller coasters, I'm fine. It's Jim's the one who's terrified of roller coasters. So you can choose two options, the one that like is uh, pretty hectic or the one that doesn't move that much. I was like, let's do the one that does, you know, goes crazy. So we're sitting in the spaceship and then it just like leans back and they actually have vents that blow on your face so you don't basically pass out. Well, the first bit was very exciting. The kids were loving it. We're flying through space. Guys, by the time we landed on the moon, my goodness, I was, I, I literally, I was like, oh, like I wanted to throw up everywhere. I was feeling so sick. And Jin was actually, we were doing a bit of a kid swap. She was waiting at Joan and she was going to go with the kids the next time around. I walk out, but like I'm lit. Do you remember? I was like green, eh? Like I sat down on the bench and Jin didn't even have to ask me if she should go. She was like, thank God you went first. I was feeling so disgusting. And uh, 
recently when we were on our sabbatical, um, the kids conned Jim to go on one of those, um, do you know the Tower of Terror thing where you get in an elevator? And they were like, no, mom, it's fine. And they told me to be part of this, like to encourage her to go. I, I, I knew I was going to be in trouble, so I just walked away. I said, guys, I'm not involved in any of this. So they got her to go. And as that elevator dropped, oh my, I tried to find a photo, but I couldn't find it. But Jen literally was screaming and her head was just like in the kid's lap. She was absolutely terrified. And, and that's what life can feel like sometimes. We, it's up and down and we, then we feel sick and we feel dazed, we feel confused, we feel dizzy after the year maybe we've had. But I wanna look quickly today at three things that where I believe is how we get our happiness. Are you ready? Just three quick ones. Are you all good? Okay, the first is joy comes from the presence of God. Not as in the gift, the present of joy, even though it is, but it comes from the presence of God. It, it comes from being around God. We are so familiar with the scripture and obviously it has to be shared in a Joy to the World series. Galatians 5.22, it says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our life. So the, the, some versions say the fruit of the Spirit. So when the Spirit of God is in you, it produces certain things in you. And it mentions love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I think you've heard some of those before. So being around God produces joy in our life. Because maybe some of you might say, well, it's not really my personality to be, personality to be like outward and bubbly and loud. I'm, I'm not saying you have to be like that, but you can still have joy in your heart because God wants you to have joy because it's a fruit of Him being in your life. Are you with me? And you're gonna need some joy, particularly in some dark spaces in your life. As we've spoken about, a lot recently, there's been some tragedy, there's been some darkness, and we certainly need joy because joy produces hope in our life. Fruit is something that God wants us to have, the fruit of the Spirit. It's, and he used that analogy of fruit because I think fruit is an incredible array of colors, tastes. Don't you love fruits? I think I've got a picture of some fruit up there. Um, I found the most colorful pick of fruit that I could find. Anyone like fruit out there? It's amazing, okay? Fruit is so good for you, and it's, I can't believe something so natural out of the ground can taste so good, like watermelon and pineapple and oranges, and I just love fruit. And particularly this time of year, what's the best fruit that kind of comes at this time of year, anyone? Lychees. Lychees, some people call it. Who likes lychees? Okay, now, by the way, there's a way to eat lychees. You, uh, we, we used to just eat them in their thousands because uh, our neighbors had like tree, this is actually from their farm, this is a pick from their farm. I mean, just lychees would f fall off the trees and there was hundreds and hundreds. I, I promise you, we make ourselves sick eating lychees. You, you take the lychee like that from the, with the, and you just bite the top off and then you, you just squeeze it from the bottom into your mouth. You do that, anyone else do that? And then obviously don't swallow the pip, okay? Because then you're gonna have some problems. But lychees are, are amazing. How many of you are like, when you're eating fruit salad, you leave the melon that last, you leave the melon, it's, it's not the tasty fruit, right? Only me, is it only me that leaves the melon last? Okay, some of you guys, okay? Eat all the, the nice tasty fruit. But guys, what, something just to understand about fruit, uh, for fruit to be tasty and to look good, it has to mature, it, it needs time. And I think we've all eaten a banana that isn't quite ripe or a mango that's not quite ripe. It's just horrible. And now with mass production and just trying to sell things quick, so often they're trying to sell fruit that, that it's not ready yet. And the thing is with joy, a couple things that, uh, just four things around fruit it, it, is it takes time. Sometimes developing joy in our life can even, yes, it's a gift from God, but to outwork that gift, it, it, it sometimes can take time. It, it takes maturity. One of the things about, as well about fruit is it's seasonal. And there will be seasons where you, you, you really don't feel it. Like, I just don't, but just know that joy is coming. I love that scripture says joy comes in the morning. That sorrow doesn't last through the night, but joy will come in the morning. Even for those that are, are literally mourning, joy will come and it's seasonal. Uh, another thing around fruit, if you want to have an amaz amazing fruit, is you've got to be intentional. You've got to water it. You, you've got to... Um, you gotta work it. And even now, a part of the series, Joy to the World, is, is I want you to intentionally listen to what I'm saying because it's something that you need to nurture, you need to water it. You need to take the Word of God and uh, just, it's, it's watering for your soul. 
You need to hear messages like this because it will help you develop joy in your life. And another thing about fruit, and uh, this is quite interesting, for fruit to really develop sometimes well, you need to put something on it that's not so nice. Fertilizer. And often it's, it's stinky and it smells like stuff that we don't really like to talk about, right? <laughs> okay, manure. But I really, really believe sometimes when we go through difficulty, we go through hard times, life throws things at us that want, wants to bury us. But I believe that we've got to see it as an opportunity that God is planting us. That we, get a, we can come up stronger and better. Although it might be dark, it might be dingy, it might smell bad, it might just feel horrible, but that is the fertilizer that God is gonna use so that you can produce joy. Anyone wanna say amen to that? The second thing is joy comes from perspective. So firstly, joy uh, comes from the presence of God. Secondly, joy comes from perspective. Now, this is a fascinating scripture on joy. I've read it really many, many times. So James, who's the half-brother of Jesus, says it like this, consider it pure joy. So he doesn't, he adds that word pure, consider it pure joy. Do you remember this? What happened to pure joy? Does anyone know? Is, are they like gone? Like, because I actually really, really used to like their pineapple juice. I'm very fussy when it comes to juice, like orange juice. For me, I cannot find proper orange juice besides that Woolworths one. But even then, they, it started to change. But you've got to buy the expensive one where it's, it's proper. It's got the, who likes the bits and the pulp? Like, oh, it's a bit, I want to chew my orange juice, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I don't want, pres I look at the back, I don't want any uh, preservatives. And I hate it when they say 100% orange juice, when you look at the back and it says apple juice as well. It's like, I get what they're saying because it's, it's, uh, it should be false advertising. It means there is 100% oranges in there, <laughs> but there's also other stuff, but it's still 100% oranges. But for me, that tells me, it's like, what's 2%? fat milk. What does that actually mean? Is 2% taken off the top or is it only 2% fat? I never understand what, what that means. All I know is uh, skim milk is the worst milk in the world. It's like, it's see-through. It's blue. It's like a, a cow farted in water. I don't know. It's disgusting. <laughs> it's absolutely terrible. But the Bible says, consider it pure joy. This is, this is joy in its purest form, my brothers and sisters. <laughs> and then listen to this. So, you're gonna get pure joy when you face trials of many kinds. This doesn't make sense. This is actually the fertilizer that I'm talking about because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. It's like he's telling us we need to go through some difficulty for us to actually have pure joy. And I just think that joy then comes from perspective because we have to have the perspective that when we go through difficulty, we need to understand that either something amazing is coming or the devil just doesn't like what we're doing and he's having a go at our lives. And if we can just have that perspective, we can go, you know, God, it's, it's difficult now, but joy is coming and I still have joy in my heart even though it's difficult. Because you can be in light places and happy places, but you can also be in dark places, in sad places, but still be full of joy. Can, just, just on this with a perspective, can, can I just help us out? Because I'm also quite good at it. We, we like to complain about things. We like to, to grumble, particularly this time of the year. There's a lot to moan about. The traffic gets bad, you know, the, the beaches get full, prices go crazy. When they talk about Black Friday, it's actually not. I, I mean, it's like, you know, even Take A Lot is driving me mad. They'll say retail price 300 Rand, and they're giving it to you for 290, 10 Rand off, but then you go find it elsewhere, it's actually 250. Do you know, do you know what I'm saying? It's like, what is going on? You know, and we got so much that irritates us. And th there can be the season as well where we get irritated. Maybe you like mince pies. What the heck? Why do people eat mince pies? Who wants, I want chocolate in a pie, like a, uh, whatever it is. There, there's so many things that can irritate us. The truck's on the road, and there's so many opportunities to have our joy robbed. Like even sometimes coming to church, let's just be honest, sometimes we drive in here, the parking's full. Oh, now I've got to go park over there. Oh, by the way, we've been blessed with an amazing opportunity to have parking over the road here at Petro Port. They've said that we can use that and we'll use the little corner field there as overflow parking, which is a real blessing. So thank you so much to Petro Connect, which have allowed us to do that. Let's just give them a hand for that. They offered that to us, which is amazing. Um, but so often we, we, we drive in and we go, oh, the parking's full. Oh, no, it's muddy. It's muddy. It's been raining. Or we come in, oh, no, look at the queue of coffee. Oh, I'm not going to be able to get my coffee now. And then you come into the, oh, can you believe it? Someone's sitting in my seat. This is, this is my seat. Like, 
oh no, the sound, oh, it's terrible, it's so loud. Oh no, Mike's leading worship again. <laughs> oh, I hate that song, I hate carols. We, we often, we might not verbalize it, but we often like that. What if we just changed our perspective and came in and go, oh my gosh, look, the parking's full. That's amazing. That means there's so many people at church today. People haven't been able to come for the last few years. It's awesome to have, oh yes, I've got to go park at the overflow. That, yes, that means church is full. People are coming back. Then you come in, oh, the coffee. Okay, cool. Other guys can get coffee before me. I'll get one later. Then you come in, you go, someone's sitting in my seat. Oh, that means that person must be new because they don't know it's my seat. Isn't it amazing we've got a new sound system and oh, isn't it awesome that the band, like they just give up their time. They were here from like half past six, quarter to seven this morning rehearsing these beautiful songs to us. That joy to the world, it wasn't the traditional one that I thought it was gonna be. It was well produced. It was, you hear what I'm saying? It's just perspective. How do we look at things in life? Can I encourage us to have a different perspective? We do have a different vantage point as Christians and be deliberate in having a different perspective. And then the last thing is how we get joy is in, this is so important because remember this side of heaven, there is, I don't think we'll ever have fullness of, of joy. I think we, there's an eternity that we can look forward to. But even this side of eternity, there are God's promises. And joy comes from holding on to God's promises. You gotta hold on to things because at the time, you might not see it. Remember we looked at that one praise word last week where you praise God for a result you do not yet see. God, thank you that you're still good, even though I don't know it right now, but I know that you're good. And when we just hold on to the promise of God, I really believe God fills our heart with joy. Listen to this here in Hebrews 12. It says, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. You might be losing here, but Jesus is one for us. He, he's our champion. Because of the joy awaiting him, now referring to Jesus, he endured the cross. So he went through difficulty, but he went through it with joy because he knew what was waiting for him. And what, I did a little study on this um, recently. The joy awaiting for him is, is not only to be with his father in heaven, but also what the cross would accomplish for us. The joy that it brought God's heart that you would be reunited with him because of what he did from the cross that he died for us in our place. And he knew that when we are free from shame, free from guilt, we can have joy in our hearts because we can be with him, not only here, but one day in eternity. Do you understand that? That's why it says joy awaiting him, the joy that we will be with him one day. He endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. And we have to recognize church that there is a promise that there is a future, there is greater joy ahead. There are loving hands holding you now and in moments to come. Maybe just as I close, I've had bits of happiness this year. I think I, I really feel like as humans, we should have bits of happiness, right? But there's also been difficult moments in many, many ways. I've, um, had happy seasons. Um, I mean, we've been really uh, blessed this year. To, we had a sabbatical. It was an amazing time. We, we got gifted a, an amazing holiday. Um, I, I love traveling. I, re I really, really do. And then a couple of months ago, I was able to go and attend the amazing GLS and preach at a church. And then recently, obviously, been over the UK, finishing our album. And Tom and I were just saying, we, we are pastors. We lead churches. But man, oh man, like we, we love to do uh, what we were doing this past couple of weeks. It, it was tiring, it was hard, and we can't do that forever. We've got a job to do with passing churches, but we really just love that. Uh, we went a day earlier and just, uh, Tom and I both enjoy running and we, we ran like uh, through London and through Hyde Park. It was just amazing, like joy filled my heart. It was, well, it was happy, it, it, was, it was amazing. But there's also been some really difficult moments. Uh, we've lost friends and family. Um, there's been some difficulties within our family. I mean, we're raising teenage kids. There's, there's always challenges there. There's school challenges. There's even uh, calling challenges when you're trying to figure out like why you're on this earth. We, we all have challenges. And I can't promise happiness to all of us because we can't control happenings. But I can promise joy unending. 
because it's a gift that he has given us. And he wants you to experience him. And he wants you to experience the gift of joy in an unbroken way. And I know life is hard. And I've, I've said to a lot of people recently when it comes to death is when, when God gets the blame, like, why would God create this earth and it be so difficult and so hard? Like, what, like, is he like some kind of cruel person? Like, what's going on? And I think I mentioned this last week, but I say, well, have you got your own children? They often say yes. Well, why did you bring children into the world if you knew that you were bringing them into a broken, hurt world? And I think the answer that you would potentially have is, well, I, I hope for my kids that the joy of life outweighs the brokenness and the hurt. I still want them to experience life because there's so many good things. There are so many good things. And I really, really hope that this season ahead, joy to the world, that you experience an amazing sense of joy. You personally, your families at this time, your friends at this time. It's been difficult. And I really, really hope that we, we can smile, not because we're happy, but we have joy in our hearts. Because you know you can smile, but things can be going wrong. Did you know that? You can smile. Because the smile is just not on the outside. It also comes from the inside. And my hope for this season, this December, for all of us as we go into the year, that we would truly experience joy like we've never experienced before. And do you know what? It can be such a testimony to other people. People can look at you. Oh, you go to Open Skies Church. They, they Yes, they're happy, but, but even when they're sad, they have joy. They're, they're full of joy. They bring joy everywhere they go. And I'm gonna trust God to bring you joy. Receive the gift today, and I'm gonna pray in a moment, but that you would bring joy to other people around you. And yesterday, Cole already mentioned it was Sky's memorial. It, it was very sad. It, it really was. Uh, there were many people that shared, and um, just hearing Jolene share, we really need to be praying for her and her, her oldest daughter. And it, it, was, it was sad. I mean, there were lots and lots of tears. I don't think there was anyone there that didn't cry. Even Dave Zondi said he cried. And he says he doesn't cry. It was sad. But you know, I looked around. There was a moment where I looked around. Joy still filled my heart. Because I was like, God, thank you for this church. Thank you for Nganiyami. Thank you that we can be here today and we can celebrate a life, although cut short, but imagine we didn't have that community. And there were people hugging each other of all different colors. It was just the most beautiful thing to actually see. And joy filled my heart because it's the fruit of the gift of God. And even Sky, who has passed away, he was still a gift to us. And he filled many of us with joy. So I'm going to pray, regardless of what happens in your life, that you would experience joy today and this season. Can we pray? Father, thank you so much for the joy of being in church today. Thank you for the season, although it conjures up multiple emotions and thoughts and can often be a sad time. But God, I pray, regardless of whether it's happy or sad for any of us, that we would experience joy in our hearts because it's a gift that you give us. And today, God, as I pray, I pray for the gift of joy over every person here today. Really, I do, God. And particularly, friend, if you have been through a difficult time or even right now going through challenges, can I ask you to do something brave and just, just put your hands up in the air? Because you, you see, your hands are gonna be open to receive a gift. You can't receive it if they're closed. Just, just lift them up a little bit. Just say, God, give me joy. Give me your joy today. And let the smile start from the inside. And maybe it might even feel forced, but let it come to the outside. Just start to smile. Sometimes it can be a bit of a happy cry. But God, I just pray for joy over every person here today. I pray for joy to fill their hearts. I pray that they would receive this gift today, even though things aren't good or don't look good, but joy can fill their hearts. And God, I thank you for the promises that lie ahead. Thank you for the good God that you are. And I pray, Lord, that you would turn mourning into dancing. 
And even through this season where we celebrate you coming to this earth, the absolute gift of joy that you were to us, I pray it would be an amazing time for us as family, as friends, as a church. Joy to the world. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Last prayer. If you're here today and you don't know this joy, you don't know this God that we speak about today, the songs have been sung to Jesus and to God, and you're like, mm, I don't know if I really know, but you've been invited by a friend. Maybe you're just visiting you today. Maybe you're new to church. I'd love to pray a prayer with you. It's a very simple prayer. I'm not going to embarrass you. We're all going to pray together. But just so I know who, who I'm praying with, would you just maybe just acknowledge quickly, just with your hand, just say, I'd like to pray this prayer. I've never prayed it before, and you'd like to pray it. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. There's a couple. Of, thank you. Some hands going up around this place. It's amazing. Can we, can we pray along together with everybody? Just pray this, um, pray this out loud. Dear Jesus, from today, I invite you to live in my heart. Come and fill my heart with joy. I ask you to change me and make me into the person that you want me to be. Thank you for dying on a cross for me so that I could be forgiven and set free. And Lord, I place you first in my life and ask you to forgive me for my past. In Jesus' name. And everyone said with joy, amen. 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 Thank you so much, church. Hope that encouraged you today. Now short service as well. That's what we're aiming for.